Early in my career, I had become familiar with the rejection slip and its ancient editorial joke about regrets. This wry observation was made back in April 1952 by a poet from County Derry who sometimes used the pen name Myola. Thirty years earlier, the said poet Michael Hurl penned the words of what was to become a much-loved folk song, Sweet Oma Town. The son of Michael Hurl and Anne Nee McGonery, Michael Hurl, known locally as Mick, was born on the 15th of December 1877 in the townland of Derry Garve near Castle Dawson. From farming stock, but always of a literary bent, when a young man, a few of his poems were published in the journal New Ireland, which was sometimes edited by Alfred Percival Graves and issued through the offices of the Irish Literary Society in Hanover Square, London. In his early thirties, Mick Hurl moved to England to pursue a career in what he described as the precarious business of freelance journalism. He finally got to meet A.P. Graves in Hanover Square and shortly after, Mick decided to settle in Luton, Bedfordshire, from where he contributed numerous articles to a range of newspapers, including the Daily Express and the Luton News. He also became a dab hand at compiling crosswords for the Luton News. In the 1920s and well into the 1930s, Mick and his brother Patrick contributed numerous self-panned poems and stories to local newspapers. Mick, who often used the nom de plume Myola, had many of his poems published in the Belfast-based newspaper the Irish Weekly and Ulster Examiner, with titles such as Bridge of Myola, The Tomb Road, Old Anna Horish and The Brown Bogs of Derry, Mick Hurl's musing clearly showed that the charms of home and hearth remained fixed in his heart and memory. On the 12th of July 1930, the Irish Weekly and Ulster Examiner published Andy in Exile, the first of Mick's series of fictional articles about a colourful character called Andy McCann, a lanky, grey-haired shoe and boot repairer, a philosophic Ulster man, a congenial widower blessed with an impish sense of humour and an inexhaustible fund of song and anecdote. Published at various times until January 1956, the Andy in Exile instalment from the 18th of June 1932, featured the words of Oma Town, which many years later would become better known as Sweet Oma Town. The scene was set as follows. Mick Hurl calls to see Andy at his workshop, and as they sit conversing by the fire at the back of the workshop, Andy fetches his new composition from the drawer of the table. I just wrote the verses by degrees, says Andy. The way we Huey Donnelly took the pledge. It's not exactly what you'd call a poem. It's more in the song line. Oma Town, that's what I've christened it. A fine town too, replies Mick. And it's about time somebody immortalised it. Carefully removing the short clay pipe from the clench of his remaining teeth, Andy mapped out his life with unreserved gusto through the four verses of Oma Town. From sweet Dungannon to Bally Shannon, from Collyhanna to Owlard Bow, I've rowed and rambled, caroused and gambled, while songs would thunder and whiskey flow. O oh, blithe and airy, I've tramped through Derry and port a ferry in the county down, but in all my raking and merry making, my heart was aching for Oma Town. So, what melody? 
did Mick Hurl decide to use for Oma Town? Well, thankfully, the article in which the poem first appeared informed the reader that the lyrics might suit the air that accompanied Father Francis Mahoney's The Bells of Shandon, but better still, they would fit hand and glove with the air of that famous music hall ditty, Muldoon, The Solid Man. Composed by Irish-American songwriter Edward Ned Harrigan in the early 1870s, Muldoon, The Solid Man, celebrated the many achievements of wrestler, boxer and health clinic owner William Muldoon. Becoming a major hit in New York and throughout the US, Harrigan's song found its way to London, then to Belfast, where it was frequently sung by the celebrated music hall entertainer Willie John Ashcroft. In a nutshell then, the melody used in Mick Hurl's Oma Town is the same as that which accompanied Ned Harrigan's Muldoon, the Solid Man. I am a man of great influence and educated to a high degree. I came when small from Donegal and my cousin Jimmy came along with me. On the city road I was situated in a lodging house with me brother Dan. Till by perseverance I elevated and I went to the front like a solid man. So come with me and I will treat you decent. I'll sit you down and I will fill your can. And along the street all the friends I meet say There goes Muldoon, he's a solid man. Together with his wife, Anna Louise, and daughter, Maisie, Mick Hurl made regular trips back to his ancestral home, rambling through the places of his boyhood, such as Toom, Newbridge, Castle Dawson, Balahi, and of course, Derry Garve. His many visits to the North West inspired him to compile and edit a collection of poems by James O'Kane, a poet who was sometimes known as the Bard of Cantahar. The collection, Country Poems and Ballads, was published in late 1938 by A. H. Stockwell. It seems that young Maisie Hurl inherited her father's love for the old country, as well as his talent for writing verse. Maisie wrote My Irish Daddy Knows, a charming little poem which was of so much merit it went on to win an Irish verse competition. Her prize-winning words were soon set to music by composer and violinist Hayden Wood and published in sheet music form in 1930 by Chapel and Co. Here's the first verse. Though my eyes have never rested on that dear, delighted land, yet I know her hills and valleys and the work of beauty's hand. And I'm sure there's angels' laughter in each gleaming stream that flows. For my Irish daddy says it, and my Irish daddy knows. Delighted by his daughter's literary prowess, Mick sent the sheet music of Maisie's song to playwright, satirist and all-round literary giant George Bernard Shaw. A few days later, it was returned by post to Mick and his daughter. Bearing the trademark signature G. Bernard Shaw, the sheet music included an extra stanza an amended version of Maisie's opening lines, from Shaw's own witty hand. At last I went to Ireland, t'was raining cats and dogs. I found no music in the glens, or purple in the bogs. And as for angels' laughter in the smelly Liffey's tide, well, my Irish daddy said it, but the dear old humbug lied. Mick Hurl was clearly chuffed by Shaw's response. So much so that in 1946 
the year of the playwright's 90th birthday, Mick sketched a pencil portrait of the renowned playwright, head, shoulders, arms and hands, and sent it off to him. Back it came a few days later, signed, and with the following observation attached. My paws have more character in real life. But let it pass. Mick then asked his friend George Warboys, a Luton resident with a more refined flair for art, if he would consider doing a sketch of Shaw's Corner, the playwright's home at Aot, St. Lawrence, Hertfordshire. George agreed. And so Mick, Maisie and George bailed into a car and drove the ten miles from Luton straight to Shaw's Hertfordshire hideaway. On arrival, they knocked the door and were greeted at the threshold by a smiling housemaid. Having introduced themselves, the housemaid duly invited them in and within minutes the delighted guests met their bearded host, who regaled them with stories, adage and anecdote. George Warboys actually managed to sketch Shaw's Corner, which GBS seemed pleased with, and a memorable day it was. While visiting County Derry in April 1943, Mick Hurl met folk song collector Sam Henry, who was more than familiar with the verses of Oma Town. Henry was clearly impressed by this poet from the banks of the River Myola, who had managed to immortalise in song a town on the banks of the River Strule. This bard of Derry Garve, observed Henry, was tall, slightly rounded on the shoulders, with features keen and kindly, scorning conventions and dress, garbed in the clothes of ease. As for the lyrics of Oma Town, Sam Henry was of the opinion that Mick Hurl was a true successor to the celebrated Irish poets of the 18th century, in that he had shown to all the world that he was a master of the very Irish art of internal rhyme. 1949 saw the release of On Loch Ness Banks, Songs and Poems of Ulster and Elsewhere, a slim yet punch-packing booklet containing 44 of Mick Hurl's musings and available to buy directly from the Bard's home at 135 Ashburnham Road, Luton. Not surprisingly, it included Oma Town, the verses of which became a favourite in the repertoire of writer and raconteur Benedict Kiley. Back in 2001, Ben Kiley was captured on film in Oma singing a verse of Oma Town. But here he applies another melody to the words, the same one used for the old ballad Carrick Fergus. It's light and airy, and I roam through Derry, art and port of ferry in the country down. But with all my raking and undertaking, my heart was aching for sweet old me. Lovely band. After a long illness, Mick Hurl's wife, Anna Louise, died on the 23rd of August 1950 at St Bernard's Hospital, Middlesex. At this time of grief, Anna Louise's daughter Maisie proved to be of great comfort to her loving dad, Mick. But life went on, and Mick Curl continued to immerse himself in writing, submitting articles to the Bedfordshire-based Pictorial and to the Belfast-based Irish Weekly. What an immense joy it was for 77-year-old Mick Hurl when in July 1955 he boarded a crowded bus near his Luton home. Having squeezed himself into one of the few remaining seats, he suddenly heard the unmistakable sound of a strong Tyrone accent. It was the conductor, politely inviting each of the passengers to display their tickets. I suppose you wouldn't have a single the matter of felt asked the roguish Mick Hurl, a grin now widening the face of the conductor. I am afraid not, came the retort, for we're only going as far as Castle Dawson. On the 
16th of July 1960, the Irish Weekly announced the death in Luton of the Bard of Derry Garve, an esteemed contributor to our columns who never lost touch with South Derry. Following Requiem Mass at the Church of St Margaret of Scotland in Luton, Mick Hurl was laid to rest in Luton Cemetery. It's interesting to note that Oma Town featured on Paddy Tony's 1975 album, The Mountain Streams Where the Moorcock Crows. But it was not until 1990 that Tony discovered that the writer was in fact a county dairy man who had lived in England for many years. One Michael Hurl, the bard of Derry Garve. From sweet Dungannon to Bally Shannon. From Colly Hanna to Aldard Bow, I've rode and rambled, carousd and gambled, while songs would thunder and whiskey flow. Oh, blithe and dairy, I tramped through Derry, and port a ferry in the county down. But in all me reckon, and merry making, my heart was aching for sweet home at town. But life grew dreary, and I grown weary, set sail to England from Derry Cay. And when I landed, the fates commanded that I to London should make my way. Oh, many a gay night from dark till daylight I passed with people of high renown But on all the glamour, an uproarious clamour My lips would stammer, ox we tome a town Now farther going, my wild oats sowing To New York City I cross the sea where congregations of rich relations upon the harbour did welcome me. In fine apparel, like a duke or arrow, they soon arrayed me from soul to crown. But in all my grandeur, with heaps to squander, my heart would wander to home a town. is over and I shall hover above the gates where St. Peter stands. You kindly call me for to install me among the saints in the golden lands. And I will answer, I'm sure it's grand, sir, to play a harp or to wear a crown. But I've been humble will never grumble if heaven's as charming as Oma Town.